All right, we're back. Hey, look at that, lovely people. All right, Max, do you know your knees? <laughs> Camera first. Whose knees? Okay, that one's pretty easy, right? I think that's Salba. Okay. Yeah. See, is it? It's Salba. Hey, it's Salba. But a new photo. New it's a newer photo. photo. Yeah. Know oh, your knees. So know your, your knees. knees. All right. Rick Howard. No, I don't. <laughs> huh. I haven't seen these either. That's T Hawk. Or either. Tony Hawk? Yeah. Hawk or Mountain? Someone yeah, at that, Upland. There's not, a, there's not enough uh, information, but let's see. All right. And it is. Oh, Phillips. Yeah, uh, a little, little tie dye would have really helped that. That, that one. Yeah. Been. Next is. All right. Oh, dude, really? What is that? It's like Mars, man. Do you guys. What is this? <laughs> I don't know. That's fucking Mars. Take a wild guess. I, know your knees, dude. The elephant, man. I don't, okay. I mean, that makes no sense yeah. of Jake. I don't know either. That was, a, that was a tough one. He's fixing the sidewalk outside my house. That was a tough one. That's Larry from uh, PG&E. All right. Stop. Check out the shirt. Oh, because maybe the color here? That's what I was thinking. All right, let's see. Um, or Gons. No, you had it. Damn, Damn it. it. Okay. Yeah, you had oh. it. All right. Cool. That one doesn't count. Yeah. Oof. First I went Rainy, then I went Fowler, then I went Stranger. I mean, navy blue dickies. Okay, so I say Rainy. You know what that looks like to me? Someone hiding under a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what that fucking looks like. It looks like, like a front side nose grinder. Does it? Front leg, knee, crotch. I don't know, I think. Shirt's coming up. I don't know. Okay. Let's solve the mystery. Let's see. Boom. Good, good job, Max. Wow. Very good. Navy blue dickies and that cuff it. job. I like Know Your Knees. Made me okay. feel semi-relevant. Dude, okay, if you had the fucking knee pad and the fucking sock. Oh, sock smell your up. knees? No, You're like, like no, the sock. That's a horrible idea. Okay, now we're going to take a break. And it's a word from our sponsor. And our sponsor today is none other than Max's new skateboard. It's, uh, dude, that shape's rad. That's the uh, that's the that's long cool. tail board. Max's new board by Real Skateboards, the 4Q model with the rising kind of Phoenix. Yes, sir. Was this your um, That's your the concept? warehouse, yeah. The warehouse, Phoenix, right? Iron Phoenix Iron Works, Iron Works. my first tattoo. Nice. Every manhole cover in Oakland for the most part. And this is your latest graphic, correct? It's my latest it's creation. Oh, your latest. Yeah. I like where you're going with this that. This is my new jam. That's Max's newest. What was your first? Onio and Clem. The Pine Street Mob, Portrait Gabe shot of the crew. I think Todd Francis redrew it. Let's talk a little bit about Onio and Clem real quick. Like that's a pretty heavy part of your of your youth. Without a I mean, doubt. Really? I mean so Onio man, man or child, you know, I I had a hard time fucking I wanted to be like a, a grown up when you see a kid in the street wearing a fucking diaper whose mom's a prostitute on San Pablo. You know, my mom or Jake or all of us were like, come on over have some food. So those kids were our neighbors at since the time they were born. As you know, you're a fucking pro skater. You can't skate all day. I didn't want to skate all day. I just decided to throw those kids in the car whenever I came in here, wherever we went. You start doing that, and then it's the kind of what you do with your day. Wake up, drink some coffee, grab Onio and Clem, take them to like the beach boardwalk or wherever, then take them skating. And they were hilarious. But when that relationship finally, they became young adults. I set up some rules if they were going to live in my house and I was going to help take care of them. You can't, can't, you got to just call me if you're out. They'd start smoking weed and they're on that path. These were kids with nothing. So it was terrifying, like, Onio comes back smelling like weed. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, dude, here it goes. And then this dude, what's his name, Sham or whatever, you know, starts bringing up to them that I'm a white guy and that that should matter, that I, you know, he shouldn't be your role model because he's a white guy. Dude, that shit's bullshit. We're all fucking humans, right? And so they got this stigma put on them that they're living with a white dude. And then this white dude all of a sudden went from being their best friend, mentor, brother, whatever I was, dad, to just being their straight up dad. I gave him three times. Come home late. Once, okay, you fucked up. I remember the second time. Third time I told Onio, I said, pack your bag, dude. Fucking, you're done. It was the first time anyone had ever not got physical with him. 
not made him feel like complete shit by belittling him. And I said, I know it's so fucking heavy for this, heavy, but like, dude. pack your bags. And I remember I drove him to his granny's house and I said, hey, dude, this is, uh, I'm sorry, but I made these rules and I'm not going to be someone in your life that, you know, I have an older brother that's an addict. So I saw, uh, what's it called? Enabling. I fucking hate enablers, you yeah. know? And uh, it, if this happens, you're out. And I said, I'm sorry. Here's where, you know where I live. At the time, I'd go to this bar on uh, Telegraph sometimes. If you can't find me there, maybe go down here. I said, when you're of age, let's have a beer together and talk about it. And that was that, dude. You know, it, Clem's in jail for murdering a bunch of people for life. And Onio is in and out for, like, stupid Oakland Jesus. crimes. You know, high-speed chases and burglary and robbery. And, I mean, what do you do when the, the dude on the corner is cooler than the dude that gets to go to Europe and skateboard. That's what I told him. You know, I was like, hey, dude, they want you. They, Jim, Tommy, you know, they're, they're down. You told them, like, get in the van. Go on a trip. You know, they're a little too young to, like, give it all to them. Yeah. But I was like, hey, like, on the side, hey, dude, you like smoking weed? You like skating? You like girls? Like, it's all there. Go have a good fucking time, but be respectful to people. You know, yeah, it's just a fuck, man. I love them. I miss them. They'll always be like ten and eleven years old to me. Yeah, but I saw Onio six years ago. He's a big kid, dreadlocks. Sure. It was all smiles, you know. But it's just uh, so. All of a sudden, I had this chunk from like eight to when I would go skate, where I was like, "What the fuck do I do?" So I got a job at a wood shop, working right. at a wood shop to like make some money and keep busy and learn. I like woodworking, like, okay. And uh, then I started messing with the motorcycles and it was like, there it is. This is what I'm gonna do with all my time. Not a decision like that, but it was really fun and challenging yeah. and that's what happened. And it's so weird because the energy I put into Onio and Clem, I had to put like a 10th of it into the motorcycles yeah. and be good at it or like, you know, get, get, have an accomplishment from it. I can't say that I would do it all over again. I mean, it was a worthwhile experience, and it was character building, and, you know, it feels good. Like, people like that I respect, respect what I did. My, my dad probably holds that at the highest place of anything I've ever done, but it's heavy to watch to put all that into it and have it just fucking disappear. And one of them's, like, murdered many people. Oof. You know what I mean? Like, that's, I didn't tell Super, you that. Super nice. Yeah. Well, you know, people make choices. You have the choices regardless of where you're from, your... your status, your amount of education you've been through, you still have choices. And you do know right from wrong. It's inherent when you're born. Right. I mean, you do know. Totally. You do. Touch the pan, get burnt. Don't yeah. fucking do it Ex again. You exactly. touch it. Yeah. Exactly. That got pretty real pretty fast. But um, I'm into this thing like 1936 to 1960 fucking whatever. I like this. I know you have it with your guitars. You're like, I don't know. It's This one feels right. And for me, I'm... I don't want to live in today's technology as much as we do. And if I squint on the Bay Bridge, well, not so much anymore, but let's say on the underside and I'm on my bike, I'm like, it's 1965 and like, slow down. I have to slow, I drive that old truck, you know, I have to slow down. Like yeah. everything moves so fast. I like to, I like to rewind. I want to move, you know, give me 2.1 million. I found the house in Bolinas. I'll yeah. be there tomorrow. You guys can come for the barbecue, man. I know right where it is. I'm hoping I, for it. I just need $2.1 million. <laughs> yeah, hear that, kids? Kickstart. Kick uh, go fuck me. Um, <laughs> so then you go skate in the evenings often at that yeah, big Berkeley ass from Berkeley, right? Yeah. Which isn't, I guess, even technically big, even though it seems big. Uh, I wasn't feeling it at all, man. I actually wanted to just like slap you the curb at Rock Ridge and do a nose slide on a ledge, or I, I, I would go skate vert. I felt like I wanted to shake everyone at the ramp, like, fucking come on, like, you're young, fucking turn it up. Like, I had that feeling a lot. Yeah. And I would be the oldest dude at the ramp and not really feel, like, I f still felt relevant, but um, I wanted everyone to fucking turn it up. It just wasn't fun. Yeah. So I filmed a video part, the one with Dan in the woods in Santa Cruz or that one ramp. It sucks. It's a shitty, it's a shitty video part, man. It was embarrassing, but I wanted to skate, you know? Sure. And then watch that, was pretty embarrassed. 
and then tried to kind of get into it again and didn't, like couldn't make it connect. And then about a year and a half ago, I just approached it all differently. And I thought about how lucky I am to be as old as I am and to be as able-bodied as I am. Yeah. And one of my things was always to never complain about how old I am or how much my body hurt in front of younger skaters. Like nobody fucking cares. And even if we do, we don't need to think about that right now. Right. So I, I would go to the ramp and just be like, today I sucked, you know, that fucking sucked. And then I had this day where I went to the ramp. I can remember it clearly. And I did all ollies. I dropped in, did a 50-50, and then I did a backside ollie. Alley, nothing to brag about, not bragging. Alley, backside ollie, another backside ollie. Ollie to fakie, half cab. And I remember making a cab aerial and being like, fuck, I haven't done a cab aerial in like a couple years. You know, just cause. Yeah. Cause, so cause I was always like skating for a four star trip or to film something or whatever. And I, I had a really good time and I realized that my feet move good still. And like my, that sounds so primitive. Nope. But like, you know, the little, like you do a lip slide and you see someone come in and their foot's still on the nose when they're riding across the flat bottom, that shit drives me fucking crazy. And, and I was taught to never, like you position. should move it around. Do a back B, fucking move it around. And I used to exaggerate it a lot on Jake's, on the Widowmaker, to just learn how to do it. And the board was that wide, whatever. Yeah. But I started to really fucking be so thankful, and I'm gonna cry thinking about it, but I would, I would drive home from the vert ramp with a beer between my legs, like after the session, and tears in my eyes, like, because I, fuck, I felt so blessed to, to skate, you know, how I could. And you think about how many people in the world that can do what you do, you know, that can fucking, whether it's a front side slappy, but for me to do a backside air six feet high still at, at my age, into a front side grind, into a nose bone indie and it to be able to look at it from an outsider's view like there's people that would kill to be able to do that stuff and taking advantage and taking it for granted i mean was kind of foolish but i needed to step away and i needed that time to realize those things because for so many years think about it the first month i'm on real go to europe go do this go do that. And I was fucking exhausted. I got kind of wrapped up in that thing. It didn't make skating any better. But then when I started to look at it as strictly, I'm so fucking lucky and I don't, I'm not an old man. And I think about long distance runners and surfers and people that are older and Lance and you, like I, you know, there are certain people you look at and you go fucking A man, that dude's so fucking relevant. Chris Miller. I don't, he makes me feel old. I actually almost can't look at Chris Miller because he's such a fucking badass. And I've wanted to ask him, hey, what do you eat? What do you do? I do <laughs> not want to know because I want to drink a couple beers at yeah. night and fucking here's, here's what I do. <laughs> hey, you know what? I used to do the downward dog. I used to do the fucking, this fucking thing. I swear to God, I did it at the Y and I would swim every day for me. I just need to skate. I don't start from the bottom, but I run up the ramp when I get there. And I'm embarrassed sometimes, like when the session's heated. But I just like do it, and I do like Hasoi, the slides, yeah. and I have a good little time, man. And I go into the slider, slider fakey, and I know right at the fakey hang up, kind of how the session's gonna be. And then it's time to go. And some yeah. days are really good, and some days kind of suck. Yeah. But when I'm driving, coming down Alcatraz, look at the bay, beer between the knees, you know, you know, you guys know what I make on fucking yeah. skateboard. It's, it's, it's a thrill to be part of real. It's a fucking honor to be part of it for so long. There's just that time when all the dots line up and make that perfect line. And it's, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. And the young dudes don't understand probably 
but they will. There's even old guys that don't fucking get it. But yeah. like, I just cried on camera because I, it feels that good. The only thing now, because I'm a surfer, uh, is um, I'm looking for a sponsorship. Uh, there's only a few things I think in your life. I'm sure having a kid, you know, I'm, that I'd never had that. Don't think I ever will. Well, you. But I, I, you I dabbled. You, you know, I dabbled with that shit. You, you did. Uh, dabbled on the dark side, literally. Um, I love skating again. I always have, but it didn't feel right at a certain time. Yeah. And I feel like I knew enough to just not force it. You put yourself in check. And yeah. that's a fucking awesome thing to be able to do. It to go, wait a second, the way I'm thinking about this is all wrong. Right. You know? And that's, and that's all it is. You can change your perception of everything just by, going, just by thinking in a different way. Or if you just step you know? outside of it and like, I'll go to a bike show and, hey man, and there's such rad people in motorcycles and some of the old dudes have lived these, it's so parallel to skateboarding. Like I watched the what's up fucking monkey video. I'm like, those right. dudes are bikers. You yeah. know, they're just oh, oh, modern yeah. day rogues, you T know? Totally. There's groupies and there's all these dudes. You look on Instagram, I'm with this dude, I'm with that dude, fucking nah. But I look like a turd skating down the street. You know, there's like those fan men in motorcycles and skateboarding. But then there's those dudes that can't really skate that well because they never had the body or mental for skateboard, for, you know, like the aptitude. But they're fucking diehard, and you yeah. meet them at Rockridge Curve, yeah. and you're like, dude, this dude, we gotta skate with this dude. This yeah. dude fucking gets it. This yeah. dude rips. And you meet those guys, and they look at you or me or whatever, like, fucking, you got to do it. Like, they wanna know the smallest detail. Like, hey, that one part in that one <laughs> intense city? Yeah. Did he really, you know, light his fart on fire or whatever? And you're like, he really did it? Oh, <laughs> man! You know, and then you go, fuck, we're so lucky. Yeah. 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 You know, I've asked you guys to kick me off before. Kick me off right now on camera. I don't question my relevance because I know I'm completely irrelevant in a certain sense. To be able to still love it when you see, like, the pain on some of those dudes' faces. They, they quit too soon. A lot of people just fucking walked away too soon and they should have fucking kept charging, you know? It hurts like hell, but it's all worth it. Do you want to play Ramble Fit, On right physical. now? No, dude, that was great, dude. Yeah. All right. I think we're good. Cool. Yeah. That was awesome. Dude, thanks thank for you. having me. Yeah, yeah, dude. That was awesome. Good times.